What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing well, hope you're good. Um, okay, first of all, if I look like I've been dragged through a hedge backwards, it's because I've just done the workout and I haven't had a haircut and I haven't had a beard trim because the barbers are closed. So please, like, just forgive this appearance. <laughs> uh, so today we are doing some functional training. For a lot of you who have been subscribers for a while, you I've done two videos already on this. If you're new, yes, functional training. Don't roll your eyes. There is such a thing. Um, <laughs> for me, so functional training is just doing exercises and movements that we normally wouldn't do um, in our training that would help improve uh, low back strength, shoulder strength and stability, and core strength and stability. Uh, so if you haven't watched my old videos, maybe check those out. However, a lot of that revolved around the gym. So what I wanted to do is do one that you can do at home. And all you would need is oh, a heavy backpack. Oh, this is heavy because I have <laughs> a 10 kilo bag of rice because I love my rice. But um, I just, this was like a light bulb moment when I went to the shop and uh, saw a 10 kilo bag of rice and thought, hold on a minute, I'll make a great, great resistance to put in my backpack. Um, and also you would need a slider, which is this. However, you wouldn't, if you don't have one, that's fine. I've given, I have an alternative in the video. Um, or some people actually use a plastic, a, a plastic bag, um, to use on the floor because I have a carpeted floor. However, if you have a marble floor, wooden floor, you can just use a towel. That's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, the main reason I wanted to do this video is because everyone is, almost doing hip workout and, and conditioning workouts and bodybuilding workouts. And I wanted to change the pace a bit and give you exercises that a lot of you probably ignore, but now that we are at home and you don't have to be self-conscious about doing certain movements, if you're, especially if you're not used to them, you can do them without anyone watching you and be, without be feeling um, silly or um, being self-conscious. So. These exercises will challenge you. They they are harder than you think. Trust me, if you're used to my training, you will know that they are harder than they look in general. But a lot of this would show if you need to work on your core strength and stability um, as, and your shoulder strength and stability. The, doing these exercises actually helps transfer into when you do heavier lift, heavier compound lift. Um, it, will, it doesn't matter what training you do, powerlifting, crossfit, bodybuilding, it all, helps it all transfers into your training so as always i am going to leave the workout in the description and then i'll go through every single one and explain why i do them and the benefits of every single one and as always i'm going to put the workout in the description box and explain every single one of the exercises and why i like to do them and give you a breakdown of you know what what the benefits are of every single exercise don't forget if you enjoyed this video make sure you leave a thumbs up that will be awesome and don't forget to subscribe because you know you want to okay so i hope you enjoyed this video let's get straight to it this exercise is one of my favorites to perform as it's great for shoulder core strength and stability also a great lat activation exercise and an indication of good ankle mobility. Before performing this exercise, make sure you brace your core, otherwise this will be very difficult. Have the weight on one side, which means you will be working each shoulder and your lat unilaterally. If you struggle with the overhead squat, there are a few things that might indicate that you need to work on. So poor core strength, poor ankle mobility and tight lats. But the great thing is you can scale this exercise by using a chair as a scaled option and also elevating your heels slightly will help with ankle mobility. Then hopefully after a while you will progress into a full overhead squat. Next we have the windmill using a backpack. Not only is this another great shoulder stability and strengthening exercise, it's an incredible thoracic spine mobility exercise and of course a great core exercise as well. Keeping your arms as straight as possible overhead and watch carefully my foot placement. Make sure to brace your core so take a deep breath in and contract your abs. Best way to explain bracing is imagine someone is about to punch you in the stomach and you would automatically engage your core for the impact. When going down, I like to face the arm that's extending upwards 
and making sure that it stays up overhead throughout. You can always start with no load overhead and then progress to hold in a backpack or any weight overhead. To progress this, now watch carefully as this is extremely difficult, so please be careful. Feet in a wide stance and this time coming down directly in front and touching the floor whilst keeping my shoulder straight up and directly overhead. This requires a lot more core strength, so please only try this when you are 100% comfortable with the main exercise. I just wanted to give a quick, quick shout out to my sponsors at Whoop, the fitness tracker I use for sponsoring this video. And if you, a lot of you don't know by now, Whoop is a fitness tracker I use that tracks my sleep, my heart rate variability. So in terms of recovery, um, it also tracks my activity. And it's a great, great app that I use to um, actually film and record my training. And it gives you live updates of the strain on the workout, your heart rate as well. It also tracks your sleep, gives you how many hours you've had, which mine is atrocious, um, I have really bad insomnia. And it also gives you your recovery for the day and what you should aim for in terms of strain and of course, how many calories you've burned. You can also use my code OBI to get 15% off. I'll put the information and the link in the description box so you can check them out. Let's get back to the video. Next, we have the Cossack squats. Now, and if you have followed my channel for a while, you will know how much I include this exercise in a lot of my training. Not only is this a great hamstring and glute exercise, but it requires a lot of core and having the backpack on the side of the working leg helps with shoulder strength and requires a lot more core work. The Cossack is a great exercise for improving ankle mobility and strength as well. Make sure as always to brace your core before performing this exercise. As you can see, I rest the backpack in the front rack position and make sure it's sitting comfortably around my chest, keeping my elbows in. As you can also notice, just like the overhead squat, I have the opposite arm out in front. This is to help with my balance. To progress this exercise, what you want to do is with the leg that's extended out, lift your toes up and go onto your heels, which would help increase your range of motion on this exercise however it is slightly harder so if you want to improve your range of motion this is the best way to progress the cossack squats to scale this exercise you can start by using a slider as you can see in the video make sure to control the movement throughout So next we have the backpack Turkish get-ups. There's going to be 10 steps, okay? So rolling onto your elbows and then onto your hands and then a hip extension into a kneeling position and then a forward lunge. And then we're going to reverse this into a reverse lunge, hands down onto the floor and another hip extension and then back down onto our elbows and onto the floor this is a great exercise to improve shoulder strength and stability make sure to follow the steps carefully and do not rush this exercise you can start with just body weight and then add the weighted backpack once you familiarize yourself with the movements to progress this exercise all you have to do is increase the load that's overhead with a heavier load your shoulders will work even harder to stay upright. This is a great exercise to help with improving shoulder strength and stability, and it involves a lot of core work, especially during the explosiveness of the push-up. Just like a normal push-up, starting in a plank position on your hands, making sure to engage your core and lower back, 
try and also contract your glutes as that's another great way of engaging your lower back. When you push off the floor, try and put as much power into the push up to get as high off the floor as you can and then land in with your arms as straight as possible. A slight bend on the elbow is absolutely fine. This will make your shoulders work twice as hard to stabilize you when you drop down to the floor. And this is why it's a great exercise to develop strength and stability for your shoulders. Next, you can progress this exercise by using books or anything slightly higher. So now you have a height you want to land on after each push up. The idea is to gradually increase the height, forcing you to put more effort into each push up. And not only that, you will have to be quicker when landing as the distance is reduced. The reverse plank march is another great exercise that's so much more challenging than it looks. It requires very good shoulder strength and stability and it also requires good core control. Make sure to try as much as possible to keep your core engaged and again I like to contract my glutes and hamstrings to engage my lower back. What makes this exercise more challenging is when you lift one leg off the floor. It requires more core engagement as well as shoulder stability and strength to keep your body in the same position. It's also an exercise that requires good wrist strength and will help to also improve on this in the long run. If you struggle with this, you can use a chair as an alternative. The heavier you are, the harder this exercise is going to be. This is coming from my own experience. Then progressing onto the reverse tabletop toe touches. Similar position to the reverse plank, however, knees bent this time. The aim is to perform a cross body toe touch. Now this becomes even more challenging as we are taking not just one leg off, but also one arm off the floor, which in turn requires much more core and shoulder stability. Next, we have the bird dog. This is a great exercise for your core and your shoulders. So with your knees bent, making sure to take one arm off the floor and the opposite leg, as you can see in the video. Make sure you keep your body as straight as possible when taking both arm and your leg off the floor. So make sure you keep your torso nice and straight. We're going to have four different progressions of this exercise. So the next we're going to have both legs straight behind and then repeat the movement again, taking one arm off the floor and the opposite leg. So for example, left arm off the floor and then your right leg off the floor. The next progression will be both arms and legs outstretched as you can see. This makes this exercise a lot harder. Don't forget to keep that core engaged throughout and your arms as straight as possible. And then on to the next progression, this time back to the original position. However, we will be raising both arms and legs off the floor and then outstretching them simultaneously, which will require a lot more core stability and shoulder stability to perform the exercise. So the next one was more an experiment to see if I can do it. And honestly, I struggled but I guess some of you might actually find it easy. So I've included it in the video as it's actually a great challenge and another way of progressing this exercise, which is always a good thing. So the idea of this is starting on your back and then you would roll into the original bird dog position. Now I struggled, as you can clearly see in the video, this was tough for me. But like I said before, you know, a challenge is a good thing.
Remember, it's all about challenging yourself and we are all having to do more home training. It's good to try something new and hey, no one else is watching so you can fail as much as you like and not feel self-conscious. Except of course, if you have a YouTube channel with thousands of people watching and laughing at you fail. That is the entire um, workout. Um, as you can see, you can, everybody should be able to do this because again, I've given you um, different alternatives and if you're good, I've given you advanced options and if you know, you're a beginner, I've given you beginner options as well. So everyone should be able to do this. And the great thing about these exercises, it can you can see how you progress by how you advance to the progression of each exercise. Um, and if you struggle with any of them, then you know that you know you probably need to do a lot more work. And you trust me, a lot of the times when people see these exercises, they always look at it and think, ah, oh, they look pretty basic and it's not challenging. But trust me, when you do them, you will find that they're a lot harder than you think, especially if you're using a 10 kilo bag like I did with some of them, it's hard. Um, now that we're in this strange lockdown quarantine period, um, this is the best time for you to do exercises that you normally wouldn't do or you're too self-conscious to do um, in the gym. So this is the best time for you to take the opportunity to do exercises that you don't care who's watching because there's no one watching you. So um, yeah, this is the perfect time. You know, I know it's a weird thing to say to learn new things and do new things and move in different ways, you know. So hopefully you find this video useful. Hopefully you can implement some of these into your training. And, uh, and again, don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and uh, make sure you subscribe because you know you, know you want to. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.